<laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki France. And I'm Zoon Reddington. And we are coming to you from the Salisbury Center Podcast Studio in our sweet little town of Manassas. Until, until they, they kick, kick us out. out. We nailed it that yes, time. That was much better. Yeah, much better. Live today, uh, Simone gets a septum piercing in the studio. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. I've had a much better day than... I don't even, is that this, the septum piercing? It's the one in the middle. It's the one that older people really don't like. Does it feel like a booger? No, it doesn't feel like anything. No. It's been in there for a long time. Yeah. What did you Um, do today? I had the best day. I had the best day. Um, This morning, I started off the day with um, a tour of the Manassas Museum, a private curator tour with my boyfriend, Bob Wilson, and his wife, Martha, who I love. But it was like, it was so cool. It was the most awesome group of people. It was, um, of course, Bob and Martha. But then I had Chip and Nancy Rohr. Like, Chip is like Manassas. We're good friends. Yeah, he is. Very good friends with his uh, daughter. Yeah. Or both of his daughters. Hey, Ginger. Hey, girl. But it was so nice to be with both of them and, um, and to be with. And then there was also Steve Hirsch, Nancy Hirsch's son, and our favorite, Jeff Pickard. He was there. Chef. He was there. He was at the tour. Hi, um, but it was awesome because we it was Albert Speeden who designed many buildings in town and um, the house next door to us, the Carper House. Mm-hmm. And they had all these original drawings on display that are just stunning. And it was neat to see photos. He designed Town Hall and... Um, it used to be the fire station, which I didn't realize. And Chip is standing there. And in the photo, his granddad's in the photo. Like, I'm standing next to a Manassas yeah, legend. I it was that. awesome. It was a really cool experience. So That's I encourage everybody about. to go to the Manassas Museum and check out the Albert Speeden exhibit. Um, it's free. The museum's open Tuesday. It's open, yeah, Tuesday through Sunday. And um, it's just really cute. Not open Monday. Re- well, they are for the rest of the summer, but after Labor Day. Mondays yeah. will be closed. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where did you have lunch? I had <laughs> Then we followed up with lunch at Loom, Mitch and I. Um, I love the lettuce wraps and the spring rolls. That's what we got today. It was so good. And James was there. His mother was working her hiney off. Oh, yeah? Oh, my gosh. That woman. She's behind. You know, she's the genius behind the food. And she was out there schlepping potting soil and pl- potting plants and yeah. working Family her business. hiney off. Right I, she was so sweet. Yeah. So sweet. But um, who did you see when you were there? <gasps> I saw her. I saw her, her be Jess from Tribe Called Jess. I was leaning more into you seeing Jeff Salisbury. I was there. <laughs> Jess also. <laughs> Jess out. is a lot more. She's exciting to see. I know, but yeah. like she's and people yeah. see her all the time. But I never, I've never met Jeff before. Jeff. I've never met Jeff, so I got to meet Wild him Style and Network. thank him for letting me um, have this microphone and be here in, in this, this outlet. Yeah, yeah, with Nikki and talking about all these and John. Yeah. John Canifer with John. I do like a sound effect, like wow, wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. That, that so should, it's been an exciting day. day. And when I was there, they told me to talk about our partnership with, um, I've already forgotten it, Bet some, John, what That's is stamp. it? Bet Stamp. Bet Stamp. What, it, what do we have going on? Let us know a little about it. So exciting news. We're thrilled to announce our partnership with Bet Stamp and Sign Up Expert, opening up the incredible opportunity for you to join some of our favorite sports books to get the best odds and new user offers. Head over to our dedicated page at signupexpert.com slash wildstylenetwork to explore a section of sports books tailored to your region, each with their own unique offerings. If you're ready to take your sports betting to the next level and show some love for Until They Kick Us Out and the Wildstyle Network, we highly recommend signing up for your next sports book through our Sign Up Expert link. You can easily find it in the description of this video. And remember, when you sign up for sports books, and using our direct link, you are supporting us and helping us be able to commit, continue to bring you the great content and, more importantly, great picks. Thank you, Bet Stamp. Thank you, Bet Stamp. Thanks, John. I have no idea what that means. Sounds yeah. awesome. Sounds fun. Sponsor. Doesn't have anything to do with makeup, so I'm going to have to research it a little more. To, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, right. But crazy news going on right now. Oh, it's a sad time. But, Man. Uh, we have some hope still, but you'll see behind us. Yes. A missing local woman, young woman, 28 years old. I mean, that's practically a baby who has a baby herself. Who's about to turn one. Yes. I believe later this month. 
missing from Manassas Park, Virginia, right down the street. Hasn't been seen since July 31st. Say her name. Um, Matma Koffel Bot, I believe. I, I, Matma. Um, and it's all over social media everywhere. Her picture. And I'm telling you. I'm reading Mamta. Mamta. <laughs> What did I say? Matma, which is what I was. Oh, Mamta. My apologies. Many apologies. Mamta. If you, I don't know when they're going to see this, maybe Saturday. If you have Facebook, if you have, I don't know, not been living under a rock, you have seen posters, postings, her sister desperate to find her. Not Um, her sister. These are friends from like her baby shower. No, her friends. Well, this is like a new story and it's not on the news. It's on Fox 5 has been pretty good. Nancy Grace covered it last night on some miss like weird channel media. I don't know. Some kind of whatever. Um, And so I had to stomach her for a while to get the information that I have written down here. But um, yeah, she hasn't been seen since July 31st. Well, July 27th, uh, she was last seen at UVA Health Prince William, Prince William Medical Hospital S- down the street. She's a she's pediatric a nurse, nurse at Prince William Hospital. July 28th, she spoke to a friend. July 31st, she was last seen by her husband. And um, there's been press conferences, there's been coverage of it, but essentially, her friends at work called in uh, a wellness check when she didn't show up to work on the 1st of August. <clears throat> Excuse me. They went to the house and the husband was like, yeah, um, she went on a trip. She for, went on a trip. She runs yeah. off sometimes. She leaves me and which her friends say here. she never does. So then he filed a report like a few days later, like he never reported her missing until they came to the house looking for her. But it actually wasn't until a few days after that. Um, the other thing um, was that when people started looking for her themselves on Facebook, uh, you know, on Facebook, when you put someone's name in, they'll be like, oh, here's their profile, maybe other people with their name. And then underneath that, there's like, you know, if I were to say, make a comment on like a Michael Jackson fan page, which I have, and I will again, (laughs) that content will come up. And so comments and, and that she had made in different moms groups. Oh my gosh. So alarming. Yeah. She'd come up and Tell us. She talked about, um, you know, being in a situation where she has no money. She feels isolated. She has no family and her husband is violent or she was scared of him. Something mm-hmm. along those lines. Um, and he'll if I he'll say if I if I leave for work that he's going to call like Child Protective Services and have my baby taken yeah, away. This is a scared woman. This is a woman that lived for this child, had a, the child had a birthday coming up, as well as she had her interview for her immigration naturalization Mm -hmm. citizenship test interview was like this month. Yeah. Which means if she had gotten that done, she would have had a little bit more. Yeah. Independent to roam around independence. Yeah. Perfect. She's been, it's been Um, classified her. The uh, Manassas park police department has classified it as uh, she's missing under involuntary circumstances. That's the the phrasing that they're mm -hmm. using. So everybody take a good look. Um, this is today is Thursday. I believe so that, this is all the information we know at this time. Yes. And I believe that um, they there's a group meeting tonight. Uh, Her friends, these yeah. friends have just Organized, rallied together. Like, yeah. And there's like 4,000. Yeah. 5,000. Like dollars donated to help make flyers and all, you know, uh, resources. But I think there's rooms walking tonight yeah. trying to like home and look around my sweet friend sarah she lives in bloom's crossing and had no idea until i said something this afternoon so oh, yes. she lives Hi, under sarah. that rock i was talking yeah. about sorry sarah i love you burn bestie <laughs> um but i did i mean i did a little research and you know like 76 percent i wrote you it sent down it here. to me yeah yeah of women that are killed are killed by someone that they know um, not going to say any more, but yeah, what are we all thinking? You know, uh, but I hope for the best. I hope that she just did run away and that she is needed Safe. free yep, and she's going to come home and everything's going to be fine. But, um, yeah, I hope that we, we find answers for her daughter. Yeah. Yeah. But we did not want to start episode three without covering it, saying her name incorrectly at first, but <laughs> saying her name in Mamta. Yeah. Mamta Koffel Bot. Yeah. Mom Say her time. name, find her, find she comes her. home. Find yep. her. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So 
I've screwed us up. We've I've jumped all over the place. Okay. Um, but let's so we have um, some corrections. Yes, there's some corrections from, from episode, episode two. One of them is very embarrassing. They're all from Simone. Go ahead. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I'm Just... so embarrassed. Um, Bob and Martha, who I was with earlier today at the museum, the Surrey Shop peanuts are actually available at Manassas Olive Oil. Adorable shop right yes. on Grand Avenue. Still go to Black Metal Met, Metal Metal, Metal Mercantile. Mercantile and see but if you want these Darren. Peanuts, yes. Yeah. You're going to go Surrey to Shop Peanuts, Manassas, Manassas Olive, Olive Oil. Oil. Right. Um, and then I also butchered my daughter's boyfriend's family's restaurant's name. It is Eggs and Sushi on Fullerton Road in Springfield. And I had the pleasure of dining there yesterday with my mother and Haley and her boyfriend, Carlix. And Carlix's mom, Katie, was just a delight. Oh, my gosh. She was cute as a button. And they we ate sushi and fried rice and... Um, I, it was just, it's in one of those nondescript locations, like Taste of Old Country, where it's yeah. in kind of like a industrial park, yeah. nothing but really. Then you go inside. You go and, inside and yeah. it's gorgeous yeah. and it's clean. It was so clean. Um, the food was delicious. Katie, yeah. I met uncle. I met all the family and it was a lot of fun. It was a good, it was a good visit. So instead of sushi and eggs, it's called eggs, eggs and, and sushi. sushi. Cool. Yeah. And then what's the next one you got here? Shane, I'm talking to you, Shane. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Tuesdays with Shane. Blaine and Stacy Perry at Sinistral. I told you I would make up for it. Um, I love them. And it, when it came out, God damn it, I knew I said it wrong. Like right <laughs> as I said it. So um, yeah, Blaine and Stacy, they have Sinistral. And that's one of my favorite places to go on. Every other Tuesday night, they have um, Tuesday nights with Blaine. And um, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. You that's where Fernando plays most Tuesday and most every other Tuesdays, Bob Ledbetter, Hubcap Dave, Bill Bowman on the bass. Um, lots of fun people there. Dana and Star Dana. and hey, so Star. If, yeah, if Star <gasps> with her right. exciting news. Her exciting news. Little baby, baby Star. Um it's a, such a great thing. And I believe he does that most year round. Yeah, right? he does it yeah. all year. So go Tuesday It's every night. other Tuesday, and it's coming up next Tuesday. Um, just jamming. Yeah, they just all like, they're, they're on the stage, they're off the stage, and they just groove. And just oh jamming. my gosh, I just love it. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite nights. Yeah. And what uh, oh. what, what food truck do they have there? Puccio's Pizza. Yeah. Delish. Yeah. Yeah. And there's only like I, I don't know, four or five pizzas on the menu. Yeah. Do you ever get it? I have not. It's so yummy. Okay. It's very yummy. Yeah. But basically, we want to tell you guys stuff that's going on because mm -hmm. I I hate stumbling across things and being like, and they're over. And I'm like, what? So that's part of what we're doing. So it goes to Tuesdays with Tuesdays with Blaine. Blaine. And, and then, but, um, and what were you saying? I'm like every other Tuesday or like you go to the Harris Pavilion and then you go. Yeah, over there. because the every um, Tuesday night in the summer, you can go for dinner night concerts at Harris Pavilion free for free. They're at seven o'clock. Bring your own chair. Bring your own chair. You can just sit like on one of the benches and listen to people jam. And there's still um, three more coming up. And I think you can go on. Is it visit Manassas.org? And it might give you, I believe it is. You go or Harris events, Pavilion. Or Harris Pavilion. I mean, I, I did write it down. We still have three left in the summer. So we have Mackenzie Ryan duo, Rick Richards, and then Shane Gamble will be closing out the season. And I actually have a cool story. Um, years ago, I was at the Harris Pavilion for one of the Tuesday night concerts. And I... I just was drawn by the music. I love this voice that I heard over the speakers. And it was Mindy Miller and her husband, Pat Gully, on the steel guitar and um, pedal guitar. I don't know what it's called. And um, they were just so good. Yeah. And now I'm like a huge fan. And do you know, what are you, are you hurting yourself? Over yeah. there? Um, she performed at the Bluebird Cafe in that Nashville already? last week. Oh, wow. Last week, tickets were sold out like that. Yeah, I was, she was gonna I was going to go down there in a she heartbeat. Eat and see her. I'm a huge fan. I'm obsessed with her. So I'm actually going to drive up. She's going to be in Maryland on Saturday. So I'm right. going to go see her in, in Poolsville, her hometown. Awesome. She's performing there. Oh That's my gosh. Amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait. So yeah, I usually hit Tuesday night con dinner concerts at Harris Pavilion. And then I make my way over to Tuesday nights with Blaine until I'm tired and want to crawl into my bed. Yeah. And go to Millie's and go home. Yeah. Uh, 
What else cool thing happened since we recorded last? Anything at all? I don't know what happened. Well, well, (laughs) I can tell you, I was driving to work one morning and Elliot in the morning, as I'm leaving my house in Old Town to go to Bristow, Elliot in the morning says, does anybody know anything about the White Marlin Open? Uh, I want to talk to someone that knows anything about it. And so at a stoplight for safety, Mm -hmm. I I text Simone the 866-235 number to call Elliot. And I said, call Elliot in the morning. He wants to talk to somebody about the White Marlin. Plug the the cast. Plug the cast. She doesn't write me back. I do not hear back from her. Like that was it. And so I pulling into my parking space at work and he's back and he's just like, hi, who's this? And I hear, this is Simone (laughs) Reddington. And I (laughs) scream alone in my car and they go on to talk for like six minutes. It was forever. It was so crazy. Like I was laying out by the pool in Ocean City and you texted me that and you know how like you can touch the number. So I did and it said call and I just wasn't even thinking I did it. There wasn't even a ring. It just went to a girl and she was like, oh, hello. And I was like, hi. And I was like, I was I was supposed to call this number. And she was like, oh, are you a fan of the White Marlin Open or do you attend? I said, oh, I'm here now. I said, we've been coming t- for ten, the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. And 30 seconds later, I was on the air with him. And it was f- trippy as shit. It's so good. And is this it? It's getting to that point. Um, yeah. It's so good. And like, she did so great. She like taught him so much stuff about it. Any question he had, she was just like, well, let me teach you. Let me, let me, let me I'll let you know. It was crazy. And, uh, but God, she just so good. It was so good on the radio. And then, um, but yeah, then they, they talked about the podcast and then like she gave him all this information at the White Marlin. It was just, it was so cool. It was, it was a really cool experience. Yeah. I was, that was just a weird, I don't know what day it was, Monday or Tuesday, maybe. Maybe, Tuesday, maybe yeah. Tuesday. And then I ran, I ran barefoot from the pool back up to the condo. She accidentally left my voicemail <laughs> while she was doing it. I almost, died over voicemail. All I can hear is like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> Do you have a clip of it? <sighs> this is Simone Reddington. Hey, Simone, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Um, are you a, you a big white Marlin uh, tournament fan? I'm a big white Marlin. I'm here right now. I've been coming for the past 10 years. We have a place right on the bay and watch the heads. The boat's heading to scales every afternoon. Dude, wait. So really, so you you've gone. So you've got a you've got a place right there. But you go every year for the last ten years to watch. Every year for the last ten years, we never miss this week. Hey, can I ask you this? And I know we've t- listen. We've talked about the, right. the the tournaments before, whether it's the white marlin or the blue marlin. I don't know what it is about this year that has me a little more wrapped up in it than in years past. Is and again, I, I was I was thinking about it yesterday when I was uh, reading that like it got underway and everybody was going and then I don't know if it's a record number of boats, but there's so many goddamn boats that are involved. Why does it seem like it's well, actually? No, you're wrong. You are wrong. She this is this, actually smaller than it's been oh, in right. past years. It's Last got year, three hundred and eighteen boats. <laughs> They're not fishing. Oh though. no, it's been over four hundred boats in past oh, year. Oh no, kidding. Last year, it was let me wind, tell you. John. Last year, was the, the purse wind. was ten point six million dollars. This year, the purse was like a measly eight something million. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, isn't that funny? In it's my head, so in my head, when I saw the numbers, it's a, it's a massive yeah. year. Uh-huh. Am I no, the- no, it is not. This is a quiet year. We have this storm off the coast, tropical de- uh, storm Debbie. So it's coming up, and I think that kept a lot of boats from signing up. I really don't know. It's quiet, and right now on the leaderboard, it's three tunas. There's not even a marlin on the board. Now I so, did read so three tunas. The winning tuna is two million something, and the the <laughs> second, the heaviest tuna is four million right now. Day one, day two. Isn't the heaviest tuna one hundred and six right now? One sixty, one sixty four, five. One sixty six and a half, I believe. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Look at, look at we don't this. even have a more marlin on the board. Marlin. But you know what is even crazier, I'll tell you. What's that? Last year was the 50th anniversary of the White Marlin Open. The very first boat that came in to scale, because boats can fish three out of five days. Right. The very first boat that came in to scale was the leading boat all week long. The very last boat that came in to scale wiped them out and won 
didn't even have a white marlin. It was a blue marlin. So the 50th anniversary of the white marlin open, Mm -hmm. a white marlin wasn't even the winning fish. Wow, how about that? He walked away with a $6 million check. God, that's amazing. So why why do I have it wrong? Why do I feel like there's more excitement this year for me, even if it's a down year? You know why? Why? Because I talked about it on my podcast, and now everyone knows. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute. Are you serious? Do you have a podcast? I talked about it before you did. Yes, I just started a podcast. And guess what? Me and my co-host, Nikki France, we started a podcast about Manassas, where we are residents. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we We talked about the White Marlin Open. And guess what? Our first episode, we had 10,000 views in five days. Dude, I, that's great. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. So maybe yeah, that's it. Thanks to you, maybe, we're going to have more views. Maybe I'm getting fed all of this online content, and that's what's got me all into it because this year. Because of me. Could because be. of me. You should get down here. Get down here and watch with me. Watch the boats come out. Come in. Is it a when the We when, get all. When the boats come in. We get all the boats. Okay, so do you want me to explain it to you? Well, no, I was just going to... No, I don't. I don't. I was just going to ask... I do. I do. Okay, when the boats come in, is it a huge celebration? So, for us. So, let me explain to you. The boats have to come down through the inlet, and they head. They have to go up to 14th Street to Harbor Island. That's where they go to scale. That's right. where the official weigh-in right. for the fish are. Right. Where our condo is located, we're right above the best pizza in all of Ocean City Toast with the super slice. Right. Delicious. But we are in Emerson Towers on Comico Street, and our dock sits right before the Route 50 Bridge. So all the boats that are heading to scale, they're big boats, they're million-dollar boats. They have to wait for the bridge to open, the Route 50 drawbridge to open. So we sit on our dock. And we can, they, they fly a flag. If I they think have, it's almost if over. Land, if they have a fish on board, I wrote down the time. they fly their flag right side up. If they caught a marlin or uh, a white marlin, blue marlin, tuna, whatever it is, they have to fly the flag upside down if they release it. So they do not have a fish on board. So we, as the spectators, the again. can find out who if has you want a fish on board before they even get to scale. Whoa. If they're partying really hard... We know that they have I mean, a winning fish. Or we fish. could just sit and listen to me talk. But it's a weird year. We don't even have any marlins yet. Yeah, I know. About. I, I know. People are I know. I know. All right. Yeah. Very good. You've been very helpful. What is the name of your podcast? My, the name of our podcast is Until They Kick Us Out with Nikki and Simone. And it's all about Manassas and Northern Virginia and the good, the bad, the ugly, the gossip, all of it. Love you. All right. Very good. Thank you, ma'am. He loves Thank you. me. I love you. You're so welcome. Yay! <laughs> he said lover. Why did I think lover. it was big this year? I feel like <laughs> anyway, that, was, that was cool. That was cool. Are and so, back? can I hear myself? Hello. Yeah, we're here. Who we're let here. the dogs out? Okay. Um, yeah. So White Marlin Open is over. Uh, the winning boat was Waste Not with a 70, 77 and a half pound White Marlin. They got a three point seven million dollar check. But we have friends. Um, Jeff Moore. He always fishes on Real Moore. The, this boat and um this year he f- he, does, he fished with his brother on another boat called absolute pleasure and damn it if real more didn't pull in the second place blue marlin damn and walk away with a 450 or four hundred thousand dollar check right so sorry jeff right and yeah. heidi yeah yeah but uh yeah so what else is new well, what else is are, going those on those are our corrections and those are our notes from last time mm-hmm. um one big thing that happened uh, was, that, you know, we did talk about in the first and second episode that um, Tang for mayor, Team Tang, Team Tang, Tang's running for mayor. We adore and love her. Mm-hmm. Um, and she had kind of an interesting thing happen. She launched her campaign colors, her campaign signs, brochures, everything. And when uh, when the color she posted went, it, she posted it. They on Facebook. They are bright pink and bright green. Yeah. On her beautiful Tang for mayor. Facebook page. What I love about it is she didn't want to just do blue and red. Uh, She's been designing and tailoring clothes for 25 years. So she knows a little bit about fashion, colors. Yeah. Um, And so she didn't want to align necessarily with the presidential election. Yeah. She wanted to stand out. It stands out for sure. Who doesn't? (laughs) How you doing? Tell me what happened then. Um, So then that. 
people started launching in on an attack. They were like, how dare you use green and pink? Why? Those are because they belong to Apicalpha Alpha, Alpha, um, a.k.a. sorority, who our current vice president, Kamala Harris, belongs to. And um, they found it offensive. Commenters found it offensive that Tang would choose those colors for her campaign colors. When do I mean, you have a brochure of sorority colors? I sure shit purse? don't. Because I am. I'm a Zeta Talfa. I can yeah. tell you our colors, teal and gray. I can tell you that. But that's the it. The day that this happened was the day that I found out that sororities have colors <laughs> because I didn't go to college. <laughs> like you know, Hamburger University. But like, I didn't go to college. Those. It's not something like the that everyone's going to know. And I don't know what the case was, but I do know that it blew up. She came. Yes, and she came up with these colors six months ago. Like way before, you know, our vice president, like, yeah, they got this nod, you know, to be the, the what do you call it, nominee. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Pink and green. I mean, it's like, so you don't own good. those colors, but the no. whole damn thing blew up and people started Nasty. attacking her over that. And before I knew it, the Manassas and Manassas Park Democratic Committee commented and made some, you know, I can't even remember what it was, but they made like disgraceful. Yeah. Like that, that it was like disrespectful yeah. or something like, that she choose you? those colors. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then the Manassas Republican committee they or facebook committee they piped in and i thought i was on an snl episode it was wicked crazy and then the next thing you know you turn it's on the news it's in the newspaper it's on the news like the washington examiner yeah and it's on their uh their facebook and then they put it out it's on news break it's here it's there it's an article about it happening colors and pink and green yeah like this it, it's not a gang so basically uh when they wrote the article, they cited a bunch of the comments from Facebook and like local people in Manassas oh. were called out. And somebody was busy, somebody dirty, was, deleting. Because then that I believe, yeah, it was the Manassas, Manassas Park City's uh, Democratic Committee went over and deleted, I guess, their, deleted their comments. I have it. But it's all many people have it because it's just hysterical. And they it's but, so like, absurd. It was national news. And it's like, you know, here on our podcast, we are neutral. We're not one side. We're not the other. Except for Team Tang. We have come out with our love for Tang. Okay. That is there. But this is not about one side or the other. This is about being respectful, having a respectful election, not being dirty to anybody. And no matter who wins, like in the end, yeah. no matter who wins, it needs to be a nice, clean fight. And like coming out and attacking someone like right off the bat over something as silly as colors. I, I don't want to see that from yeah, either side. It was absurd. You know? I, and I guess I'm naive for thinking that like maybe it wasn't going to be that way. But I. Yeah. Well, I, I guess they like realize the absurdity yeah. as well, because like I said, dirty delete. Dirty delete. Um, but yeah, it's it was it was I encourage people to get involved with local politics. And um, after that, I was curious because they wanted to see, you know, who some of these people or meet some of these people. So did you know you could have lunch with the mayor? When? On Fridays in the summertime. She still has like a couple left in August. And it's at the Manassas Museum where I was today. And I bring um, it, it's like a paper bag thing. You take your own lunch. You did. And yeah. I felt really weird because I brought like a sub and, <laughs> and chips. Like I went to a Grand sub. Central Station and got a drink. I roll <laughs> in like ready to eat. And she had no food. And I said something. I was like, I'm very uncomfortable eating while you're not eating, I was like, I feel like we're on a date. And I mean, there's plenty of other people there. Um, and everybody was very nice and very friendly. And it was it was great conversation. I met, um, I think her name was Marianne. She sat next to me. She was a, a school liaison with Manassas City Schools. And awesome. um, really cool program. Awesome. It was just really yeah. good conversation. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, I've had a lot of people after they've seen um, our episodes or listened to them, um, have said to me, listen, I, I didn't know Tang was running for mayor. You know, I know who she is, but I didn't know she was running. And then they follow it up usually with who is the mayor now? Yeah. And um, this is a great opportunity for you to go and find out for yourself and chat with her and hear what she has to say before the elections ramp up later this month. I mean, this is a perfect opportunity. If you still think that our mayor is Hal Parrish, <laughs> Which I have had people say. <laughs> Who I love. I love you, Hal. Um, 
I, uh, <laughs> so if, if you think that, then you can, you can go and you can meet her, have a convo, you know, get to know her, get to know both of your candidates, swing in and see all of the candidates. Yeah, and we have school board candidates, city council candidates, and I do have favorites on city council. I mean, some of them are my neighbors and I absolutely, Robin Williams. I absolutely adore Robin, her husband, Rob. They no, are. No, they're not. I didn't Robin, Robin, Robin. Robin comes to the salon. Hello, girl. Love you. I did not know her. They were Robin, Robin. <laughs> now you can't even say it. Yeah. Yeah. They, I love Robin. She served on the school board. Mm -hmm. She is a real estate agent. She's just super involved in the community. Um, I really, 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 really love Robin. Yeah. For she's, a, she's an awesome fit. I'll speak more on candidates later yeah. this season um, as I meet them. But uh, and then who else is running? Stephen Kent, Stephen Kent, and Lynn Forkel Green. Lynn Forkel mm -hmm. Green has tremendous experience already, and then city is, council and that's um, with Team Tang, and then yeah, and and, and then Stephen Kent, and he's super hungry, right? he's super hungry for this town. He was on the the neighbors of historic Manassas. Oh yeah, uh, he's your local wife, Mel, who also comes to the salon, mm -hmm. by the way, and their daughter Sophie, I think. Yeah, they're they're a sweet family. They all look like three kids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not that old. He's out there doing the thing, though. Yeah. Not clean living. Yeah. Um, but speaking of getting involved, um, when we filmed our last uh, episode, we had... Uh, threw just, out stuff. Threw out stuff because we want answers. And we were so lucky that um, the uh, the director of uh, current director of HMI reached out to us and was like, let's connect. Like, yeah, I wanted to sit for, down, wanted to clarify some things. You have questions. Here's the answer. And just to know, if in any way, if anybody thinks that we were bad mouthing HMI last time, let me just take a second and say, absolutely not. What we want to know is where's their budget? Like, if, if we're a historic heart, modern beat, like if we're, they don't, up, we're, they don't hardly have a budget. If we're, if we're like trying to like bring people to our town by saying like history, then HMI, you would think from that's going to be our a nice budget. And what did you find out? Um, so I sat down with Kristen. It was really nice. We sat down at Jirani and um, she kind of helped me clarify the difference because I said, I was like, there's a dust up between Patrick Small, city of Manassas economic development and HMI. I didn't know what it was. You know, you just kind of read things and you're trying to piece them together yourself. And so she helped me clarify like city of Manassas economic development it encompasses the city as a whole, where HMI is really focusing on our businesses and our um, restaurants, our, 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 businesses here right in Old Town Manassas, historic Manassas Incorporated. And what do we do to bring in more tourists, more shoppers, more diners, more foot traffic? And what do we do to make our um, historic Manassas stand out? We, we are part of the Main Street program. We were designated that in the 1980s. And out of the Main Street tiers, like we're in the top tier of main street cities and we need to maintain that. And so she was telling me some of the struggles that the, um, that HMI is up against and they're, 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 they have a very, very, very small staff and they have a lot of, um, volunteers that work in the, um, visitor center in the train station, but then they're also helping all the Amtrak uh, riders with train schedules and booking, you know, they're not Amtrak employees. So they're just being pulled in many different directions, small staff, yeah. small budget. Their budget hasn't been raised in years. How many years? Um, like 10 years, I think it's really little. And, but all the, the city's starting to absorb some of the costs that they were up against for first Friday. Are you checking your text? It's about the wedding. <laughs> I'm getting an email. <laughs> six about months. The wedding six months from today. Six oh, months. Courtney, I love you. Eagle Beach. Eagle Beach. Oh, don't come down there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, huh. I'm coming. <laughs> I know you're coming. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be in the window. Like this. Hi no guys. window. There's no window today. Well, I mean, like when Our you're outside. when you're out, like yeah. doing that. Anyway, you're going to be there, and you're going to be eating. Listen, um, what <laughs> what are the things that <clears throat> HMI are responsible for? They do the first Fridays. Um, and as I was saying, city of Manassas actually has started Huge. absorbing some of the major costs that go into, you know, these events cost a tremendous amount of money. The porta potties alone, like if you are taking a piss in a porta potty like that, 
there's they are there and they're expensive. The getting them there, moving them, cleaning them out, blah 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 blah. So the trash, police, I, there, there's a lot of expenses that go into that. So City Mass has started absorbing some of that. Um, but yeah, they do First Friday, the Railway Fest, Fall Jubilee, and the I big. Love the Fall um, I love the Fall Jubilee too. Uh, um, Celebrate America, the Fourth of July yeah. celebration. So they do that. And I think that's where the confusion came in because they would promote other events that Parks and Rec had booked or um, I don't know, whoever else. And on their website, just saying, hey, this is going on in town. But they weren't actually the ones holding them. Like when we have um, the Puerto Rican Festival or the Greek Festival, El Salvadorian Festival, man, those festivals are loud. They are fun. Wow. They are fun. So fun. And they are, I, it is full volume on my patio Mm -hmm. and we're out there dancing. I love it. Yeah. I love like going down and like dancing and well, horribly and everyone else is oddly rhythmic. (laughs) They can do things. Everybody can do things with their butt and I can't do any, I just shake the the fat. No, but, um, (laughs) I love it. I love it. So what else did we find out about? Um, This is also kind of a correction. Yes, this is, this is major news. And this is the most important thing that Kristen wanted me to relay to everybody that they did not double the farmer's market rent, seasonal rent. Like everybody's saying they doubled it, tripled it. I mean, there's crazy rumors going around. She said they went roughly from 350 to $425, not a crazy jump, but they did it intentionally. They wanted to trim the farmer's market down a little bit to get more parking, um, you know, maybe swap out some of the vendors. Uh, Wait till you hear this. So this, to me, this next part coming up here oh, yeah. is the best. I cannot wait for her to share this information with you because I feel like this is actually something that people are going to learn about and like be able to use. And I do want to go back and say, I am one of the people that said it was doubled because that's what I heard. Uh-huh. And that's I what you were it. reading everywhere. But that's part of what we're doing. Yeah. Is we're going to get this so, information. Correction, but, newsflash, yeah. not doubled. Not doubled. But what is amazing is that because Kristen wanted to like let us know what was going on, Simone found this next part out. I yeah. didn't know this. They have a community row. So when you enter the farm Saturday farmers market, that first row is is community driven. It's all about um, services that you can find within the local community. Um, they have a special grant. HMI has a special grant where they can match a certain dollar amount for EBT and SNAP um, benefits that people may be using at the farmers market on on necessary food items. You can't use it on you know a candle or. But they have that. They have a similar program for the elderly. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. People and don't know and, this. and this is something which is interesting. I did not know this. They offer free space at no charge to local businesses in town. So all of our awesome shops, Totally Vintage, Things I Love, Calico Jacks, um, um, I am sitting in the picture of my friend Allie. <laughs> Shining Soul Candle <laughs> Company. Shining Soul, Black Metal Mercantile. Um, who who else are we? Who, who can you think of? Who have I seen down? Honey and Ivy. Did you say them yet? Well, I, yeah, Honey and Ivy, yeah. the bakeries, um, Lemonade Bakery. They, can have, a they free... can have a free space within that community row. Yeah. So if you are a business in Old Town, you can represent yourself in addition on Saturdays at the farmer's market. So yes. I thought that was really cool. Amazing. She was awesome. I had a lot of fun with her. I could have talked with her for wish hours. I could have gotten there as well, but I work for a living blue collar. Yeah. But um, yeah, that I job. love that. I love that. People don't know that. If you, if we said all that too fast, if you heard something you'd like to hear again, please just rewind it and listen to it again because. And if I said something wrong, reach out. We have, I mean, you can, you Which, can. Happened. Yeah. And, and that's I what happened. It. Kristen yeah. reached out and we, we actually, Molly reached out and Kristen, Lisa, I was Molly's sister. Oh, Lisa, 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 Harlow. Thank you for reaching out because that's what we want. Yes. We want this to be a positive experience yep. at the same time. This ain't the news. Yeah. I am not Walter Cronkite. Do this I look like Lester Holt? I got, I got a little bit smaller forehead. A little bit. Yeah. But that, so it's a podcast. We're going to say things You're choosing here. to listen to yeah, us. <laughs> or, or maybe I've made you. But we're going to say things on here that they may not be right. Please correct us. They may, we wanna, be, yeah, we they want, may be scandalous, not in a drab called Jess Ramp kind of way, but you might not agree with it, but it's a podcast. And like people say insane things on podcasts all the time about like jet streams and whatever those things are called. 
If you don't like something, open. Tell me. Open the dialogue. If you do like something, that's what tell we want. me. A dialogue. Like, that's all we. That's all we want. And so, but just remember, if a piece of information that we're saying ain't right, guess what? We're just finding things online on Facebook, word of mouth. Nikki, I'm on just the a mom. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm a mom with salon. Facebook while I'm at the car wash. Right. But we want all of that. All of that stuff that like people are like, what is this? What because is we this? all care. We want the actual information, and yeah. that's what happened. With this, it was great and it was amazing. So, yeah. but like transparency, yeah. We want, we just there's a lot going on in town. We want to know who, what, why, their hotel, where, owner. yeah, what's happening with that slab of n- n- shitty concrete. Slab is right, yeah. <laughs> what well, it's just so that's what we, we just want to understand our community better. We want to entertain you. Entertain, let us entertain, entertain you. And we know people like we, we each know are so lucky to know like certain people that like we can get this information from. Um, and you know, since our first, um, episode, I've had people say multiple times, like I learned something. Mm-hmm. I, I know, I, I know something. Like and people like, want to make a day trip to Manassas. Yeah. Holy shit. And, yeah. <laughs> yes. Promotion city. Where I'm trying what? to get George. Come George. George. What was the name of his book? Real name? Naughty. Real Naughty. I'm going to say it every yeah. time we're on here. Um, but that's the thing. We want people to want to come here. We want the people that live here to it's an awesome know place. everything. You know, it is an awesome place. And that's what we're doing. Um, we want to force our sweet little town into maximum potential. That's what you mm-hmm. wrote. Yeah. Oh, I, f- I forgot we were reading that. I don't yeah. know where we are. Now. Well, say it. Simone, oh, oh, Simone writes. yeah, I did write that. We want to force our sweet little town to its maximum potential. Um, and if it means putting a spotlight on certain situations that make people feel uncomfortable, then so be it. But damn it, it's a conversation I want to have. I've yeah. lived here for uh, for my whole life. And um, I'm uncomfortable all the time. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but speaking of living here your whole life. Oh, I yes. have this thing I'm going to read. I love that this. I want to talk about. Um, so it's another character. Oh god, look what I'm in doing. In our town. Oh I don't, gosh. Girl. Yeah. I'm nailing it. Nikki. <laughs> um, so 21 years ago, I started working in Manassas for Pier <clears throat> And there were two women that used to come in every Thursday. I remember with my friend Charlotte, sometimes with my friend Brenda, as a we don't. And they uh, were uh, Ann Harover, Manny mm-hmm. Harover, mm-hmm. Manny and Lisa's mom, also Chris. And then Betty and I, okay, we have said Anastasia forever. Like all of <laughs> no, us have yeah. It's Anastasi. Anastasi, Betty Anastasi. And she passed away last week. And I reached out to Molly and because uh, there's no eulogy. You can't anywhere. find anything online. But she gave me a copy of her eulogy and I was reading it last night and I was in like choked because, you know, of course, we, we knew Betty for so long because she came in the salon and it was just one of those weekly sets, you know, and like um and she was very, always dressed very well. Mm-hmm. I've um, never seen her, but I saw photos mm-hmm. online yeah. where she and her husband, Pete, two years ago, celebrated their 77th wedding anniversary. And they rolled up to the Freedom because he's a World War II vet. Mm-hmm. They, he was in his uniform and they rolled up. She was in the sidecar, mm-hmm. just a doll. And they did a special. Yeah, there was like coverage. Oh, yeah. so sweet. Um, and like that's like Channel Four was out there that day, and it was it was it was wonderful. But they, um, I wanted to talk about her because if you like plugged in like to a Chat GPT, like tell me a story of a woman from Manassas that was born here and past here, literally it would be this story. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I have highlighted some things. My friend, Brenda B dog also helped me, um, pick out some things. Betty's parents, um, were, her roots are from Prince William and Loudoun counties. Betty was born, um, on May 9th, 1925 in the cat Harpen area. Yeah. Not um, Catharpin. Not Catharpin. Call it whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. Um, grew up on a farm. Uh, she was an only child. And, uh, Betty then, uh, lived, stayed with family friends and family so that she could go to 
Osborne High School. Oh, oh my gosh. What year was she? What year she did you graduated graduate? She graduated in 1943, which at that time she had a five-year diploma um, so that when, as soon as she graduated, she went and got a job at the Prince William County Circuit Court <laughs> because, oh, you know, like yeah. I said, um, and she was a clerk. And um, during that time, the war was going on. Uh, there were dances sometimes in DC, the USO was putting things on. And, um, I found out that, okay. So this says Mrs. Walser Rohr mm -hmm. Rebecca, mm -hmm. and others would set up USO dances in Manassas on one special occasion. I'll get a lump in my throat, invited Betty to attend. Little did she know that she would meet the man of her life there. Sergeant Peter Anthony Anastasi. Um, a Yankee from Philadelphia who was stationed at Vent Hill. Oh my God. So that night he was, he had missed the bus to go to like a dance in DC. And so, um, one of his fate. army, it one of fate. his army buddies dragged him along to one that was in Manassas. He loved to dance. That's what I like to hear. Um, Peter's still alive. How old is he? 102. Pete. And Pete. Yeah. And I bet he's dancing. My man. I bet he still likes to dance. And I know, and but they were married for 79 years. That's beautiful. And he outlived her. Um, but anyway, so they met. Um, they got uh in 1945, they were engaged on April Fool's Day. They were married on June 9th, 1945. Um, and then they moved around a little bit, but basically ended up coming back, I believe, to Manassas to raise their children. Um, and they built their forever home in 1964 on Long Street Court. My Nana was Long Street Drive. So Aww. Betty and I would always talk about that when she came in the salon. Um, love. And um, let's see what else did I want to say. Okay. Then there's this. In addition to being married at Trinity Episcopal Church. That's right next door to me. Right? Yeah. Don't. <laughs> um, Betty was baptized and confirmed in this church. She and Pete were both very active. She was on the altar guild, taught Sunday school, helped in the nursery, you name it. Um, that is the same place that they had her, her, her service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like all in that same place. Again, if you could write a book. Yeah. Um, she was, um, very active in both the junior and senior women's club. And on June 2nd, 2001, she was awarded the Osborne high school alumni of the year by Osborne High School Alumni Association. Aww. She also served as a Prince William Hospital Pink Lady. Of course she did. I can totally see her doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't have it here, but I guess her husband, he is a poet, and he had written a poem for her years ago. <sighs> I'm glad I don't have it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know cry. if I could handle that. And this is some notebook style. Oh love. my gosh, it's like, she told me about it last night, and I was like, holy crap, that's the notebook. In our town, in our sweet little love. town of Manassas. In our sweet little town. Yeah. I can't believe it. But Betty, you are so cherished and by so many people and you will be missed. And Pete, you've got a community behind you mm -hmm. and we're so sorry for your loss. But thank you for that love story. 79 yeah, years. That's married. beautiful. I, even, I mean, that's almost twice my life. Because yeah. I'm kind of young. <laughs> kind of cool. But yeah, I really wanted to share that because I um, love that story. I didn't know her. Yeah. I just I wish now I wish I had. Yeah. But Pistol. There's there's so many Pistol. awesome yeah. characters in yeah. town. And that's just yeah. highlighting one of them. And I, I hate to highlight her in this in in at this time, but um it's such a good story. It is. I'm yeah. so glad you told me. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we have anything major. We can go over some upcoming events. Let's hear it. Yeah, we have, um, at the Harris Pavilion, they have their weekend concert, uh, next week, the Blue Bottleneck Band and Soul Roots. And those will be the final ones. That's August 23rd, Blue Bottleneck Band, August 24th, Soul Roots. August 24th is also the Spotted Lanternfly Tour at the Manassas Museum. And you can also check out the Albert Speeden exhibit that I checked out today and um, the Manassas Garden Club's beautiful garden. Um, the curator at, at that we met today, her name is Mary Dellinger. And I just really, 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 she was so knowledgeable, friendly, fun. It was great getting to meet her. Um, yeah. Well, then in I don't, a couple of weeks, we'll have another first Friday coming up. Yeah. Um, and there's music. Every weekend. Yeah, that'll be September. Because I see people all the time and they're like, 
Is there any live music going on? Oh, and goodness. Like, every Friday night. Yeah, every Friday night. It doesn't even have to be access. first Friday. Yeah. Every Friday night. Yeah. First Friday will be September 6th. Come on down. Come yeah. On, come on. It's a good time. Maybe Simone and I will be there to meet you. If you're hearing our voices and wanting to, yeah. to meet us. Yeah, if you want to meet us. Yeah. You want to meet us and sponsor and us. Sponsor us, Eric. We so we can met last week. <laughs> yeah. So we can keep doing this, and they really don't legit kick, kick us, us out, out. Um, because that's that's always um, there's always potential there's for always potential being for that tossed out on our ass. Um, and so, so while I'm talking about it, you need to find us on all of our platforms. We're on um, on Spotify, Apple, Amazon. Oh my gosh. This was crazy. I got home from the beach and my Amazon Alexa had a yellow ring around it. You know, you're like, yeah. Alexa, play my notifications. And then she usually tells me about a storm. But she told me that there was episode two of Until I Kick Us Out. Ah! Or Until John. They Kick Us Out. I effed up our name. They, they, that, Amazon told me. How exciting it's was so that? Cool. It's so cool. I started laughing so like an idiot. And yeah. Haley was laughing too. I was like, can you even believe this? Yeah. Like Alexa. So Alexa. Play until they kick us out podcast. Episode three. We're yeah. sorry. We removed that podcast and you've been kicked out. <laughs> oh, I, I, every time he does that, I'm like, Hoo. yeah, yeah. Um, but they're like, I, can you repeat that? Yeah. I just, um, you know, we didn't have as many views on Facebook of the second because we do have this on a lot more platforms. So we're I spread out a little thinner. Yeah, I don't know what the numbers are. The thing is, I don't care. Yeah. Because we're having a the blast. time of our lives. Yeah. We, Hardly know each other, but we talk all the time. When she was away at the White Marlin, I was just miserable. I mean, hey, Courtney, maybe everything was great. <laughs> but um, so it was. I just, love it. I could do this every day. Yeah, I know me too. And like, I wish somebody would pay us to do it. Uh, oh my God. I Gosh, know, we, we just need to keep in here for every 10 days. I made a mistake. What? We were talking about things coming up. Oh, what we did were, you forget? Well, what did you we forget? Were talking about everything in the downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday. Here. Here at the Salisbury Center, local Palooza, and Black Flag is playing, Three Hole Punch is playing, Age of Ruin is playing. Um, what is the name of that swing band? Oh, crap. Ben McNulty is, I think, the guy that's in it. Uh, the Knuckleheads. Knuckleheads. Um, but there, there's, so, there's so many bands. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have the list right in front of me, but Local Palooza, oh, it's on Saturday. Um, everyone in the family can come. Um, it goes on all night. We're going to end with, with Black Flag. It's going to be just a great time. Um, um, I When I ran into Jeff and Jess today yeah. at Loom, uh, they were talking about fights. And I was like, so what fight should I Break my August Salisbury cherry 24th. with. You should come out next Cage Saturday. Zilla is what Jeff Cage said. Zilla that's what Jeff said, and that's what that Jeff said. A great one to come out to. <gasps> I'm a little nervous. I don't be. know why I'm so nervous. It's awesome. I feel it's, like it's, somebody's it's, gonna fun. make me Look, fight. <laughs> I, I think at first, if if you're not used to fighting, it's a little bit of, of a shock to your Sorry. system. But well, by the end of the like, night, you will feel like you could run through a damn much wall. My heart is beating at you the thought. Kick this door open. I I always think like I'm gonna go to the fights. It's gonna be great. I get here, they start fighting, and I'm like, ah. yeah. but then like by the end of it, I'm just like I'm screaming. I'm throwing dollar bills. Yeah, I could. Like, I will cheer. Oh, like Bryce, like, yeah. Bryce wrestled for a little while, and I loved it. It was Stressful. thrilling. But the stress, no, yeah, no, so no, literally, no, yeah. No. I was sitting. So I think I might I do I that. I think I might do that. Everybody I was sitting cage side one time. Will and you be at the? If you, if I go, will you go with me? Twenty fourth, yeah, and hold my hand. Duh, I'll be there. We'll be up here. But <laughs> I was sitting in the ringside, cage side, whatever it was. It was during one of the Muay Thai nights, and blood got on my. Coat. I was gonna say, does sweat or bodily fluids? Muay, Muay Thai. Muay. I know what it is. I know how to say it. Did somebody have a wet wipe? No, it just, it blood <sighs> got onto my coat because I was so close, which by the way, you can upgrade and get those seats and they're awesome. Don't put your coat on the table. Um, don't wear my mink. I threw it away. <laughs> that was the end of that. It's from H&M, who cares? But like, um, you got to come to the fights, the fights. And I that, am. I'm, I'm very, I'm, li I'm you honestly and everyone listening. interested. So, um, yeah. yeah. What, what date is that? 24th. Same day as the spotted. So after my spotted lantern fly oh my toy God. tour, I will. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll clearly change my Simone. clothes and then I'll head over to the yeah. you don't have to change your clothes. Um, well, I don't know if the outfit covered will... with dead lantern flies. Um, well, just so you know, I think the door is open at five or seven, so it's, okay. it's an evening event. Do I'm I have sure to stand in a line? No, you know, you us. make a phone call. Not you know us. enough people here no. that we can get you <laughs> moved through. In a line. <laughs> Jeff from Wild Style. Do Jeff I get like a so pass scary. like they had on Wayne's World where you can? No, yeah. but I wish. But you get like a band on your hand. Okay. But yeah, so local Palooza this weekend. Uh, Cage Delay 80 the next weekend, September 20th. Um, once again, Daycare Swindlers reunion show. I'm not going to be here for it. I'm going to be in Ocean City. But Good times. they have already sold like almost 200 tickets. So you got to get your tickets to come see American Television um, and uh, the Daycare Swindlers because it's going to be amazing. This is how Mark finds out that I'm not going to be here for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, that. Oops. Yeah, those those are where coming up, and but it's just gonna be a great time. You gotta yeah. come Saturday. There's one yeah. more. There's the uh, Grateful Almond Band, which I think it's a Grateful Dead tribute band coming up September 28th. Cool. Not sure if you're deadhead or not. But we will we'll we'll talk about that one again. I have lots of friends that to get are that, to get Howard. That Howard, I'm Howard. talking to you. Which Howard? Howard um, Stoller. I just met him. Well, I, well, you know what? I haven't known him that long either. I love I Howard. Yeah, no, He's such Facebook a vibe. Friends. He's such a like yeah. cool. I saw him on my people you may know Facebook, and I talked to him in the street, and I yeah. was like, I oh, saw he's him always on around Facebook. town. Yeah, lovely. And then we send each other friend requests or whatever. But we're friends. Hi, yeah. Home. So you get Howard. You, Howard. You he listens. He listens. Good. Well, he's going to hear this. He's going to come yeah. to the Grateful Almond Band. <laughs> um, but do you have anything else you want to say? Um, I just want to recap this really quick, please. Mom Ta. There's a, yeah. an excellent Facebook page that these wonderful friends have started called Fine Mamta Koffel Bot. And I hope I by think, the next yeah, time find. that we meet, we have some good news. But mm -hmm. I just want to circle back. If you haven't prayers heard all her, about prayers it. Prayers for her baby. The more eyes on it, the better. Prayers for her and her baby. Uh, um, I love you guys, but we got to wrap this. Yeah, please. We're, all the time. We got stuff to do. What we got it, another show damn coming damn in. Schedules. And are it's they cooler it's time than to go. us? It's are time you gonna, to go. It's time to go. Get you guys got to go. You got to get kicked out here. So ah, let's go. Ah, <laughs> I was, I was Love you, John. Time. Yes, thank you, everyone, so much for listening. <gasps> thank you, everybody. Yes. Watch the Wild Style Network. All their awesome podcasts. Yep. If yep. Watch. Um. Uh, come down to Salisbury Center. Watch the Wild Style Network podcast. Tribe called Jess. Um, Notebook wagering, stand up and shout mm -hmm. until they kick us out. And we just have a new one, RE in real time, which is Forrest Odin Forest Hall and Lonnie Hall. Plaster's Odin newest Hall. podcast yeah. announced first here on yours. Yeah, here on ours. Yeah, Forrest. We love Forrest Odin Hall. Mm -hmm. And he's making some big moves and he's got his own podcast. And with Lonnie. With Lonnie Plaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and they're um, opening up a new um, real estate ooh, office. Now I did it to myself. You're a Manassas. <laughs> you're a Manassas. Yeah. Go for us. Yay. That was very yeah. exciting. All okay. right, Simone. Well, text me in five minutes. Love you. Love you too. <laughs>